There's one. Oh, yeah. Small ways like this. Ooh, nice. Very nice fish. Got them, got you. Get them every time. That's a good one. Hey, how's it going? Paul Mueller here. Today I want to show you how to fish a drop shot rig using your electronics. We're going to be fishing in 25 to 30 feet of water, and we're going to be fishing tight schools of smallmouth that are preferring a vertical presentation. So I'm going to be using Lorance HDS 10s. I'm going to show you a few simple ways to set up your unit to help you catch more fish. All right, I want to show you how to set up your HDS unit. You want to go into sonar. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your ping speeds up all the way. That's going to give you your best read. Next thing, you want to zoom in one time. And what that's going to do is zoom in on the bottom half. You're going to get better, better target separation. It's going to allow you to see your bait better and see how the fish is responding to your bait. After you do that, go into pages. I go into chart and I do a split sonar and chart with chart being on the left. And I like this because a lot of these areas, the fish are schooled up. I'm going to mark where that school is when I find them. I got a waypoint. So I know exactly where I am. The GPS is just as important as the sonar part of it because it's going to keep you on top of those fish. So I want this zoomed in all the way. I know exactly where that school is. If the school moves, another great feature is say you're, you're marking some fish. You want to mark this. Say there's a school right here. You hit a waypoint, enter. You have a new waypoint. So now, you can go back to that same setting and you can see where that, fit, that school of fish is moving. And so to me, that's, that's really one way of keeping on top of these fish and this really helps me put more fish in the boat. With properly tuned electronics, you can see everything that's going on under the boat. The two lines descending is my bait and my drop shot weight. And you're able to see if there's any fish in the area and how they respond to the bait. There he is. Came right up to the the bait, as you can see. It's a nice one. Good night. Oh, nice fish. Beautiful smally. All right, the tip of the nose. That's a good solid three pound fish. My name's Bob and Shaker, and I want to check you, check this out. I want you to show you this. This was my bait. This is the fish coming up to my bait. This is the fish being hooked and coming up, and these are fish coming off the bottom to inspect what's going on. And on this unit, yellow and orange are the stronger signals. So the more yellow you have in 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 the arch, the bigger the fish it is. So those, these are obviously bass. These fish are coming up to the bait, you can see it, and you know exactly what they're doing, you know, to adjust your presentation. There's one. That's a good one, too. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Nice fish. He just barely came out. I saw him on my graph, but he didn't, he didn't eat it that great. And so that's the importance of having a graph and watching the fish actually how it's responding to the bait. You know, you know that fish is, sometimes you get a fish to come up to the bait and then go down. So you adjust your presentation. You have a nice seven foot Champion Extreme Dobbins rod. I mean the sensitive, most sensitive spinning rod I've ever used. Braided line with a long six pound gamma edge fluorocarbon leader. And it's just the ultimate feel. I mean, and look at it, he was barely hooked. He just came up and, and nipped the bait. Got one coming up. There he is. Another nice one. Ugh. That's a good one. Using a long leader and a heavy tungsten weight. What I'm doing is I'm keeping the bait above the fish. Because what happens when you get in a tight school of fish like this, you keep the bait above them and they come up to it and you get them to compete with each other. And that's how I'm catching, I'm watching every fish on my, on my electronics. 
and it's like a video game. It's it's really cool. You get to see the bait, and you get to see the fish come up to the bait. And there's when when it's like this, there's no better way to catch them. There's one. Nice smallie. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. Next time you're drop shotting, try a long leader with a rain's bubbling shaker. Catch smallies like this. Okay, I just want to show you uh, the bait I was using today. It's a rain's four inch bubbling shaker worm. And uh, the color I was using was a bluegill pattern. And it basically looks like a smoke, smoke color with uh, blue and gold fleck in it. And it, the profile of the bait really looks like a, uh, a bait fish. This plastic is very, very soft and it floats. So it stays completely horizontal on the drop shot rig. And if you, by barely just shaking the rod, it, it has so much action. What I really like about this bait is they put a little bubble tail with a little tip coming off the bubble, uh, at the end of the bubble tail. And that just gives it, that little tail right there, because it's a little bit bigger, just gives it so much action when you're working the bait. It just looks like an injured bait fish. And I was able to catch a fish that spit up what they're eating. And this is an alewife. This is the predominant forage. It looks like a shad. Um, and as you can see, it is the identical size. Talk about matching the hatch. That's, that's uh, critical. And as you can see, that fish has a little bit of gold in it and purple. And you got the, the blue, which is close to purple and gold fleck. And that right there, this little worm is killer. So as you can see, it really caught them today. So if you want to catch fish like that, use a rains bubble shaker worm and improve your catch.